Let's get started. I'm going to be talking about uh, extending Hyper, uh, the app also formerly known as Hyperterm. Uh, I'm going to stop using that, that name now uh, just for copyright issues. <laughs> um, so, like she said, um, I'm a PhD student at the University of Washington, and I work at 538 as a computational journalist, um, which means I spend a lot of time doing data visualization work and working with open source web technologies um, and writing JavaScript pretty much all day. And what Hyper is, is a terminal system uh, that is built on HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Um, using React and Redux under the hood. Um, and the nice thing is that it get, exposes the entirely uh, customizable plugin system. So, uh, a show of hands, who here knows what Hyper is? Just so I can tell. Okay. And who here knows what Redux is? Pretty much everyone. Okay. <laughs> um, so, what it does is it exposes this plugin system so that um, basically, in the uh, actions that you're dispatching and in the app state, your plugins can just directly uh, kind of hook into the, the Hyperterm uh, Redux system, and you can customize the entire thing. And I'll get into more details on that in a minute. Um, and I just want to shout out to uh, Guillermo, who's the creator of the project, um, best known on his work on Socket.io, probably. Uh, and I just want to give a disclaimer that I am not a core developer of this project. I'm just a big fan of it. Um, I like writing plugins for it, and I think there's an awesome community around it. So keep that in mind. Uh, this is what Hyperterm looks like. I'm just going to give a short video. And while this is playing in the background, I just want to kind of discuss like a little bit where my interest stems from with this. I think that it's, it's, we've been using the terminal for so long in its current state, and you know, we, most of us have Macs, we use iTerm2 probably, um, but basically it's been the same for so long. Um, and there hasn't been much experimentation, there hasn't been much change in the design, and for good reason, um, because it works really well. But this is in a way kind of just exposing uh, all these options which were kind of, you know, hidden behind these crazy bash script kind of esoteric languages. Uh, and they're making it, it's making it really accessible to people. Um, and it's also exposing this kind of new exploratory design space uh, for developer UX. So, you know, imagine what you want your terminal to do. Um, with Hyperterm, you can probably make it do that. Um, and I'm, I'm going to talk about how. Um, so, like I said, there's a full plugin system. Um, you hook directly into the Redux uh, lifecycle, and it has its own plugin manager uh, called HPM. So you can npm install HPM, and then HPM install whatever Hyperterm plugin you want. And the way that you're actually going to customize this thing, if you're a plugin author, um, is basically this is the entire app of Hyperterm. Hyper, sorry. Uh, and you can expose decorators for any of these components. So if I say, so in the middle there is term, uh, I can say I want to make a term decorator. And the term represents the actual terminal that you're writing to. Um, and so what a term decorator does is instead of returning uh, directly the, the terminal component, um, you can modify it in some way uh, with whatever uh, UI changes you want, and then return your decorated component instead. Um, so what this ends up looking like, this is an example using HPM, uh, installing this app called HyperPower. So you can install it and kind of change you know, anything that's happening. So in this case, uh, you know, the, the HyperPower plugin uh, adds this, this CSS particle effect to your, to your terminal. Um, I'll let it play one more time. So <laughs> maybe not the most useful, but pretty fun. Um, here's another example. Uh, this one's a purely stylistic change. It adds a cool gradient border. Um, again, you can install it with HPM, uh, or you can add it directly to your config file. 
Um, this one, hyperline, adds a status bar at the bottom. So it's not actually changing anything going on in the terminal, but it's, it's just changing the design. It's adding some extra information to the bottom of the window. Hyperambient is pretty cool. Um, this is uh, watching, it, uh, I think it's using your webcam to see how bright is it outside, how much light is there. And it's going to change your theme from light to, to dark based on uh, how, how much lightness there is. So if you're going from the dark to the nighttime, uh, your theme can switch over automatically, kind of flux style. Um, and there's a list called Awesome Hyper um, that aggregates all of these plugins. Um, you can, our, <laughs> the author is sitting in the front row. Um, <laughs> But yeah, go check it out. Start on GitHub. Um, it's there's a, a ton of great resources here. A ton of a ton of great community contributed uh, plugins. Um, and what I kind of want to address as I go further into this talk is the things that I showed you were pretty stylistic. Um, they touched on the surface of the terminal, um, but they didn't actually sort of modify uh, any commands that you were doing. So they didn't hook into like, you know anything that you actually typed into and, and the output of that. Um, and I want to sort of walk you through at least one way that we can write hyperterm apps that uh, do this at a, at a deeper level and get kind of more ingrained into your terminal. So to start, i um, just going to do a quick Redux overview for anyone who's not super familiar. So you have a single app state at the top, um, and you have a user interface in the bottom right. Uh, if you've written React, this should look familiar. Um, the idea is that it's a one-way data flow, so whatever is in your app state is what is displayed at the, on the screen at any given time. The user clicks on something, um, the UI dispatches an action, and it's passed on to this thing called a reducer. The reducer is just a function. It takes an action in. And the output of the function is a state, so we completely replace the app state. So let's give an example. The user clicks. Say action A is dispatched. A new state shows up. And there we go. Our user interface changed to yellow. Um, and what this looks like uh, in a uh, hyperterm app, um, so Let's let's look at hyperpower again. Um, this is a this is a good one. So what it's what it's doing is, um, if you'll notice, it's purple at the start, um, and then you type wow, and the confetti kind of changes color. It's not just purple anymore. Um, and how this works is, if we if we look at this life cycle, um, we're going to change something slightly now. Uh, so you click. And action A is dispatched. Um, now the plugin intercepts this action, says I'm going to do something else instead. Uh, you output a different state, and your interface changes in some different new way. And that's basically, in a nutshell, how uh, Redux plugins work. Cool. Um, so what this looks like in the code. Um, this, is, uh, this is the middleware, so this is basically where action A is getting crossed out. Right? So we're looking, we say, if session add data is the action type, um, and if some other condition is met, then we're going to dispatch a completely new action, which is this wow mode toggle. Um, and the way, and the way that this is working is by saying, um, is the bash output while wow, command not found, uh, which is kind of weird, um, and we'll come back to that in a second. Um, but so what's happening is when you type in wow, there's actually no wow command. It's just intercepting that and just making a change. So the reducer code just watches for the new action, and it toggles the state toggles wow mode on and off. Um, and then you pass down wow mode into your actual 
uh, React component, and you can just say, based on whether or not we're in wow mode, change the confetti to uh, purple or birthday cake colors. So we're going to intercept the Redux action. In this case, it was session add data. We're going to do something different with that action. In this case, wow mode toggle. And then we're going to update the UI. Um, and this bash wow command thing is kind of, uh, it's, it's a little strange. Like, if you're reading through the code, you're like, why is there not a better way to do this, right? It's kind of like looking for some bash error is probably not the best way to write plugins in general. <laughs> um, so how can we kind of fix this? Um, yeah, so what, what can we change here uh, to make this like a little more robust? Uh, and so before I get into the, the solution, I just want to point out like why this is why this is there in the first place is that if you remember uh, this is the entire component tree of hyper we can go in and decorate the terminal component but the problem is that that is kind of the lowest level um, there is no react component for terminal prompt terminal output etc you're just at that point you're in straight up normal JavaScript land um, so you don't get all of these uh, nice React Redux uh, events. And so there has to, you, basically you need a workaround for that. Um, and I propose that the workaround is uh, an additional command. So you have the wow, the hyperpower hyperterm plugin, but you also have a command to go on your, on your command line. So when you type in wow, that's not gonna air out anymore. Um, it's actually going to be a, a first-class real bash command that you're running. And here's an example of a uh, plugin that does that. It's called Hyperchart. So this reads in a JSON file, and it will add a graph uh, to your hyperterm. Right, and so this is kind of cool because now we can actually pipe files um, into our plugins. Um, we can pipe the output of other commands into them. Um, we're no longer kind of limited to just a single command that doesn't take any input. Um, and so basically, the, the thing that we need to solve now is how do you communicate between these two separate uh, components? Um, so you kind of just want to, like, pipe the entire output of your command to cat or something like that and have the hyperterm plugin read it in. So here, um, you know, I, have to, I, have to, I still have to intercept the output of this somehow, um, but I just need to do it in a more structured way. Uh, and the way that I do that is I just dump everything to a temporary file and return some metadata. So what this looks like if you don't have the plugin installed you run the command. Uh, it outputs this header, which is a bunch of chart emojis. And uh, then it outputs some metadata. So it has a path. So it says, OK, look for the data in this temporary file. And then it has a type, which is a uh, scatter plot in this case. Cool. OK. so. This is the code that you saw before for the uh, wow command. And this is how, uh, what we changed to make it work with the, the new kind of two, two plugin setup. So this line here, bash wow command not found, um, now, now uh, becomes, does our output data start with this header? And this header is a hard-coded constant somewhere. Uh, that's the emoji charts. If it does start with the header, then we're going to look for the uh, metadata and read in the file, and then we're going to dispatch our Redux command. So again, we just dump a bunch of things out, intercept it, 
and load it in on the hyperterm side. And so I, I showed you the, what the actual command line tool does. Now, talking a little bit about what the hyper plugin uh, does. It has full access to pretty much any React library that you want to install. So you can do um, all sorts of crazy things with this. Um, in this case, I'm using a charting library called uh, Victory to do this. So I'm piping in my, the output data directly into this Victory component, um, which then renders the chart. So the whole, the whole thing is, is like 100 lines of code or something for both parts. It's pretty small. Um, and this is what the, the actual component looks like. Um, so I'm decorating a terminal. So I create a terminal that has all the props that I need. Um, and if the state is that there should be a chart on the screen right now, um, I create a chart and I put it inside this hyper window thing, which I'll show you in a second. And I uh, add that to the children. If there's not supposed to be a chart, I just skip this step and just display the terminal directly. Um, and hyperterm window is a reusable component that acts as the overlay. So it's just the little, this little guy. Uh, and this is kind of nice because if you start to think about what works as a uh, interface design for these plugins, then we can modularize all the components of those and make it really easy for other people to start putting uh, their own components into it and wrapping these things up really nicely. Right, so this window thing I'm just requiring uh, from NPM, and then my chart is, is just a few lines of a call to the, the victory library. OK, so I think I have time for a couple demos. Um, the first one, uh, of course, is that this whole thing itself is a hyperterm plugin. So, <laughs> um, this is using the hyperterm window that I just showed you, so we can expand it and collapse it. Um, and it's just a little React slideshow. Um, and we can do kind of some other fun stuff. So, Let's see. Um, you can display images. Um, so let's see. And all of these are just uh, using the same the same window plugin. Um, yeah, everyone, make sure to vote tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks. Let's see what else do we have. Um, let's see. So there's this hyperplay one that. Um, we'll basically take in kind of any media file, and then uh, it'll do like a picture-in-picture -picture style thing. So I can start playing a little video um, down here. I can scrub through it and everything, um, which is pretty fun. This still works. You can go full screen. Um, and uh, additionally, since the React component that I'm using under the hood for that works with kind of files or streams. I can actually stream YouTube videos and things, too. So I can watch like a Dr. Katz episode or something in my terminal <laughs> while I'm doing work, right? Um, <laughs> so yeah, this is basically what I have. Um, I just, you know, I want to say, are these things that I showed you the most useful, maybe not. Um, but I think it's a really cool time to be exploring what, what we can do with the terminal and what the future uh, sort of options are here. Um, and if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer now. Um, but thank you. <laughs>